In this video, I will review every single ETF that you guys have left for me in the comments below, whether it's suggesting I should invest into it or asking if it's a good investment. And before we get started, the top things I'm going to be looking at for each ETF are what it monitors as far as sector, index fund, the holdings it has, its top five holdings included, its growth history, its dividend history, and its expense ratio. So let's get started. All right, so first we have RYLD, which is a Global X Russell 2000 cover call ETF. Since the history is right here, we'll just start with that. So in the past year, it's lost almost 7%, which is not the greatest. We go further back in the past five years. So I've seen a few positions like this before. I'm pretty sure this just means its inception hasn't been five years. It's been less than that. So let me just, we'll get to that point in a second. But we kind of peek over here. We see the dividend frequency is monthly. We we already see the expense ratio is 0.6%, which from my experience is pretty high. That just basically means for every $10,000 you invest into this ETF, you're gonna get charged about $60 every single year, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that much, but when you're comparing it to other ETFs, it can be a lot. So based off its fund profile, it tracks the performance of the SIBO Russell 2000 by right index. I'm not honestly sure what that is. I do know what the Russell 2000 is. I'm pretty sure it's an index fund full of small to mid cap companies leave comments below if i'm thinking about that wrong its exception was on april 18th of 2019 so less than five years ago so it makes sense it doesn't have that five-year history holdings breakdown this is one of the most important parts for me it has almost 17 percent tech 16 percent industrial 14 percent healthcare, 14 percent financial and 10 percent almost 11 percent consumer cyclical that's not bad and then for its top 10 holdings vanguard russell 2000 etf which i guess makes sense as far as that's what it tracks i didn't think it was that direct i'm not sure what this is uh super micro computer micro strategy comfort systems a lot of positions that i'm not super familiar with but let's go on ahead and go to its dividend details so dividend yield is 12.11 percent that's amazing if it's able to sustain that that would be great so let's see if it can actually do that so this is already not good it reached a peak at 2022 of paying five dollars and eight cents per share per year but then it dropped all the way down to two dollars and twelve cents so i'm not too happy with that probably wouldn't want to invest into this for the immediate dividend growth and then on top of the you can see the consistency of pay none just for consistent years of dividend growth and only four years of consistent dividend payments but you're not really sure on how much you're getting paid this year to the next to the next so i'd probably pass on this one but you know we're checking that out so the next one is qyld it's the global x nasdaq 100 cover call etf before we get started this is one i personally invest into i think i have at least 12 shares of it it's one that's been pretty good for me but let's refresh our memory and break down what this is about so in the past year it has grown over four percent which is nice past five years it's dropped negative 21 percent in the past 10 years it's dropped negative 27 percent if we look over we see its expense ratio is 0.61 even higher than the last one so that kind of sucks it has an 11 point five percent dividend yield and pays two dollars and seven cents every single year per share so i know this position monitors the nasdaq 100 which i believe are the top most valuable stocks within the nasdaq again correct me if i'm wrong but it buys cover call options which then it sells those for premiums and it takes that money and it pays the shareholders as dividends so it's a pretty interesting way i know there's other positions i actually i think ryld does the same thing it's also a cover call etf i think i just kind of overlooked that as far as its holding breakdown, almost 50% in technology, which I kind of personally like because that's a very volatile section, pretty much trending upward for the long term. 16% communication, 12% consumer cyclical, healthcare, 6%, and so it's consumer defensive. And in some of its top holdings, I also like Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta platforms. Those are positions I'm pretty confident are going to be increasing in the long term. It's kind of weird with its the QYLD's long-term growth history going down. As far as its dividend growth history, a bit of this is pretty eye-opening for me, just seeing how it has decreased over the past couple of years. So I think I bought my first few shares of QYLD a couple of years ago, maybe back in 2022. And I see in 2021, it hit its peak and it's dropped since then. But personally, I haven't really had any issues with this ETF. I am consistently getting paid, but obviously this is a position I understand that I'm investing into not for the growth, 
So I kind of watch how much I invest into it, at least in this period of time, as opposed to when I was first investing into it and getting a little excited off the dividends. Next, we have DIVO, which is Amplified CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. This is definitely one I haven't heard of. See, in the past year, it's grown over 7%, almost 8%. Past five years, grown 31%. And 10 years, it doesn't really show a full history just because it hasn't, it, it's not that old, but I like the history so far. Dividend rates, $1.74 per year per share, has a 4.5% dividend yield. It's a lot healthier than the last two positions or last two ETFs. Has a 0.56% expense ratio, which is lower than the last two, but still pretty high. So this position invests in growth and value stocks of large cap companies within the market cap range of the S&P 500. So it's not too bad. As far as its holdings breakdown, we're looking at 19% financial, 16% tech, 13% consumer defensive, and then healthcare and energy at 12 and almost 11% respectively. And the top holdings are this Invesco short-term government agency install. I'm not sure what that is, but it's kind of interesting. Then Microsoft, Caterpillar, Home Depot, Visa, pretty strong positions, also including Walmart and Chevron, so not too bad at all. Dividend growth, just kind of briefly looking at it, it had a peak at $2.63 in 2019, then it dropped a lot in 2020, and it started creeping up in 2021 and stabilized, decreased in 2022, and it looks like it's been stabilizing since. This is a position I probably would keep looking at, especially for the monthly dividend and payouts but as far as growth it does look a little bit concerning at least for the past couple years all right so next we have jeppy this is one of the positions one of the few positions i've heard about a lot it's the defiance s p 500 enhanced options income etf it's very new it doesn't even give you a full year it looks like it was accepted in september of 2023 so that's interesting it has a 0.99 percent expense ratio that is insane that's almost a hundred dollars for every ten thousand dollars you invest into it that you're getting charged per year so i'm already not feeling this one but we'll just keep going has a 27.5% dividend yield, which is, if you're a new investor, this would really excite you if you're going into dividends. Pays $4.69 per year per share off a six, almost $17 per share position. So that's it's wild. So this position invests in growth and value stocks of large cap companies, I'm guessing within the S&P 500, just based off the name of this ETF. And then its top holdings is government and cash and equivalents. I'm pretty sure I've seen some ETFs that are like this, so this may not be the only one, but it looks like like its top holdings are within treasury notes and treasury bills. I am familiar with notes and bills, but as far as why there are ETFs that cover those, it's just, that's new for me in the grand scheme of things. There's not much history for its dividends because it's less than a year old, but it shows again, almost 20% dividend yield, almost a $5 percent annual payout or $5 annual payout. Latest announced monthly dividend is 55 cents. So if you do that per year, that's was over six dollars a year so that'd be increasing it if it actually held that then this would be definitely an etf to consider pretty heavily and this is the other jeppy position that i keep hearing about i think i've been asked about this one the most it's the jp morgan equity premium income etf as far as its history goes it's grown five percent over the past year and it's less than five years old it looks like it was incepted in may 27th of 2020 but it looks like it's mostly gone down maybe just like by couple dollars per share maybe almost 10. as far as expense ratio is 0.35 percent that is pretty low again i've seen a lot lower but that is not too bad it has a 7.45 percent dividend yield paying over four dollars a year per share not too suspect in my opinion so this position invests in stocks of companies that are deemed socially conscious in their business dealings and directly promote environmental responsibilities that for people that are pretty concerned about how companies are like the esg the environmental social and the governance categories for positions. I know they can be rate companies can be rated on that scale for people that are concerned with that. This may not be a bad ETF to invest into, at least for the time being. 20% almost technology, 14% industrial, 13 and a half or almost 14% healthcare, then financials and consumer defensive. So that's not bad. But as far as the top holdings, we have Amazon.com, Progressive, Meta Platforms, Train Technologies, and Microsoft. Never heard of Train Technologies before. A couple of pretty strong holdings. Thanks. Nice. 
Also see Visa here and Ad Visa, it's not too bad. Dividend growth history, this is really common. There's a peak in 2022 and then it just kind of drops there in 2023. So over $6 in 2022 and then down to almost five. Not really sure why that is. As far as its consistency of dividend payouts, it has zero years of consistent years of dividend growth and only three years of consistently paying its dividend. It is a new ETF, so this being low makes sense. The fact that the dividend growth is zero Zero doesn't make sense or it's kind of concerning especially that it had a peak in 2022 and then dropped the next year so I don't know about this one so this is JPQ JP Morgan Nasdaq equity premium income ETF this is a the JP Morgan ETF I actually have never heard of so the past year it's gone up 20% past five years again this is a brand new one but that one year growth I like it so far hopefully this is one that continues in the long run has the same expense ratio as JEPI at 0.35% has a bit of a higher dividend yield at almost almost 9%, so it pays almost $5 every single year. And this does the same thing, and invest in stocks that companies are deemed socially conscious in their business. So same thing I said last time with Jeppy. Holdings breakdown, it looks very similar to Jeppy, except it has more in technology, like QIOD, almost 50%, 16% in communication, 13.5% in consumer cyclicals, 6%, almost 7% in healthcare, and 6% in consumer defensive. And its top holdings are Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, and Meta platforms. This is almost really familiar to QILD. I'm gonna eventually have to look at both of these. It's not gonna have much of a growth history, I don't think, yeah, because it's brand new. So as far as its dividends, again, almost 9% yield. Its latest announced dividend was 43 cents, so that's 40 cents, almost $5 a year. So that kind of comes in track with this. This may be one, at least off the top of my head, that I would add to a watch list just for a quick money grab. It's one of those positions that you're not expecting long-term growth, especially if it has the same kind of pattern as some of the other monthly dividend paying ETFs with high yields have, but it did grow over 20% in the past year. So we'll see what happens in a couple of years. The next one is SVOL, Simplified Volatility Premium ETF. This sounds pretty interesting. So in the past year, it's grown almost 3%. And again, this is a new one. I really gotta be prepped for these. This one has an expense ratio of 1.16%. This, at this point in time, this is the highest expense ratio I have ever seen in any ETF. This is crazy. You're getting charged $116 per year for every $10,000 you have in Invest it into this ETF if you were to invest into it. It does give you a dividend yield of 16.27%, which pays almost $3 or $3.67 a year. So that's insane. I'm assuming the dividend yield payout history is not going to be super nice, but we'll see. The fund invests in high quality short term debt securities. And it benchmarks the performance of this portfolio gets the SP 500 total return index. So, okay. So as far as holdings, government 35%. Other 30% and 30% cash equivalents, and then some. Its top holdings are other ETFs and treasury bills. Besides the treasury bill, these are some positions I personally have not heard of, so I have really nothing to say about that. And growth history, still pretty similar to a lot of these other ETFs. Really low in 2021, shoots skyrocket to $4 last in 2022, and then last year drops a little bit in 2023. So I'm not really sure how I feel about this, and this is personally probably one I would pass on. Next one's PFF, this is the iShares Preferred and Income Securities ETF. As in the past year, it's grown over 3%. This is probably gonna be a new one again. Okay, it's dropped almost 13% in the past five years. Okay, this is not an, a newer one. In the past 10 years, it's dropped negative 19%, or it's dropped 19%. So growth doesn't look great so far. Does have an expense ratio of 0.46%, so that's not too bad. Has a yield of over 6%, so it pays off $2 and one cent per share per year to every shareholder. So it says for its fixed income portion, the fund primarily invests in US dollar denominated preferred securities, hybrid securities, and convertible preferred securities. Nothing that I've honestly heard of. Let's go to a holding breakdown. 87% utilities and then 13% in healthcare. And then invest in 97% in corporate bonds. And it's top 10 holdings. Yeah, don't ask me what that is. I'm not sure what this is at all. So we're just gonna keep going. Dividend growth history. It does have a nice amount of dividend growth history. So it does look like it's consistent, which is good, but it's not consistently growing, which is something I'm personally looking for. So I'm not really sure this is something that I would check out, but 
at least it's consistent. This is probably one that if you're not concerned about growth, you'll take a look at. All right, so next we have SPLG. This is the SPDR Portfolio S&P 500 ETF. In the past year, it's grown over 26, almost 27% over 70, almost 78% in the past five years and over 170% in the past 10 years. Guys, guys, I like this one so far. Expense ratio is 0.02%, okay, that's $2 for every $10,000 you're investing into it in fees per year. Has a 1.35% dividend yield, pays 82 cents per share. Okay, so that's something that I was gonna be a little concerned about. I'm, this is not a yield that I would normally invest into, but this is growth. This is more the reason why you would probably invest into this position, at least from what I see so far. But let's keep going. So this position tracks the performance of the S&P 500 index by using representative sampling techniques. I don't, the representative sampling, I'm not sure what that is, but it tracks the S&P 500. So that's pretty straightforward. It's holdings breakdown, over 30% technology, almost 13% financials, 12% healthcare, then consumer cyclicals and communication. Top 10 holdings, you have Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, and Meta. Okay, I like this one so far, but let's just, let's try to relax, let's keep going. Dividend growth history, this is, this is more of what I like to see. It's 2013 up into 2023, it's consistently increasing it's consistently growing which is great but i think if i peep up here it shows me it's only had three consistent years of growth so at one point yeah in 2019 2020 it just paid the same dividend yield but that is okay it still has a history of growing so just based off checking this out this is actually one i would put on my watch list so far this might be the position i would invest into now if i had to pick next one we have is qqqm it's the investco nasdaq 100 etf see in the past year it's grown 37.7 percent and it doesn't have a five year history so this position is pretty new so the past year growth that's not bad at all has a 0.15 percent expense ratio and that's not bad has a 0.65 percent dividend yield so it pays off a dollar 19 cents per share per year which makes sense over its high share price so this must be anticipated to be more of a growth stock that or a growth etf that also pays a dividend that's that's okay the fund tracks the performance of the nasdaq 100 again i think that's the top 100 most volatile most traded stocks in the nasdaq please again comment below if i'm saying that wrong and to keep going yeah just so it, its exception was october 13 2020 so it's only almost four years old. Holdings break down almost 50% technology, kind of like QYLD and the other position, I think JEPQ, I think. 16% communication, then consumer cyclicals, healthcare, and consumer defensive. Its top holdings are Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, and Meta Platform. We also see, you know, Costco, Google, Broadcom, so not too bad so far. It doesn't have much of a growth history, but it is steadily increasing. So that is something that's not bad at all. This is probably would be another position that I would personally add onto my watch list at the least. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this position because this might be one of the most popular ETFs on YouTube in general, SESD, Schwab, US Dividend Equity. It's gonna be consistent growth, almost 7% in the past year. I think it's gonna, okay, it's still high at 46 7% in the past five years and 109% in the past 10 years. And sign up, this is a position I invest into, not super heavily, think under five shares. I'm just slowly getting into it. Has a 0.06% expense ratio, which is great. 3.36% dividend yield, which is also great, especially for the fact that this is a growth position. So obviously that's why I'm investing into it. If I remember this correctly, it tracks the Dow Jones dividend 100. I think it takes the top 50 dividend paying positions or something like that within this index fund. And that's where this uh, ETF comes into play. It's holdings breakdown, financial at the top, followed by healthcare, industrials, consumer defense, and energy. So not bad. And then it's top holdings are Chevron, Lockheed Martin, Verizon, Texas Instrument, and UPS, United Parcel Services. And if you guys don't know, it just went through uh, something called a reconstitution, which happened a couple of weeks ago. At this that same time, every single year, SEHD goes through a modification so that it ensures its shareholders its ultimate goal is still its ultimate goal. So with that being said, a lot of companies have been modified as top holdings and a lot of companies have been removed like Broadcom, I think got fully removed altogether. Growth history, we know it's great. I really don't have any other concerns for this position. I wasn't super heavy in this position, even though I did invest into it, but I'm probably going to be 
more heavy, especially knowing that it's years of growth, 12 years. And that's just, it's growing dividend payout, not how long it's been paying its dividends. So this is definitely a great one. All right, next one we have is SOXQ, it's the Vesco PHLX Semiconductor ETF. I have no idea what PHLX is, but maybe we'll find out. In the past year, it's grown over almost 60%. Past five years, nothing. So this is yet another new position. 0.19% expense ratio, 0.72% yield, 28 cents per share per year. So that's not super exciting for me, but the, the one year growth, again, that's not bad at all. So this ETF invests in stocks of companies operating across information technology, semiconductors and semiconductor equipment, semiconductor sectors. That's actually a pretty cool thing, especially where we are at within technology with things like chat GPT and companies that are going to be majorly an impact or companies that are going to be a major impact within the world right now, like Nvidia, they're making data centers and GPUs and stuff like that. And semiconductor technology is based on that, or it's based on semiconductor technology. So this could mean a lot of growth for the long term. Technology 100%, that makes sense. Stop holdings, look at that, NVIDIA. I, I honestly have no idea. That makes sense though, almost 12%. Then Broadcom, AMD, Qualcomm, Intel, all companies within technology, obviously. A lot of these companies make graphics cards, GPU, CPU, so anything semiconductor based. So, okay, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad at all. Then dividend growth history, three years, constantly growing. This is definitely one I would put on my watch list. I am pretty bullish on semiconductor sector, especially where this world is going to with advanced technology and stuff like that. But we're just gonna have to see what happens in the future. This is an interesting one. So we have IRBO, it's iShares Robotics and Artificial Intelligence Multi-Sector ETF. Okay, I'll bet you this is new too. Maybe not. Past year, it's grown 11.45%. Past five years, it's grown over 32%. And past 10 years, it's not 10 years old yet, so fairly new. Expense ratio is 0.47%, a little bit higher than I would want, but whatever. Has a 0.89% dividend yield and pays 30 cents per share per year. It's kind of low. So this fund seeks to track the performance of the New York Stock Exchange Fat Set Global Robotics and AI Index using representative sampling techniques. Its holdings break down over 62% in technology, then 17, over 17.6% in communication, over 13 industrials and consumer cyclical financial and healthcare. And its top holdings are MicroStrategy, which I need to look into. That's a position or a company that's popped up a lot. I don't know too much about it. ARM Holdings, NVIDIA, Spotify, that, okay. Okay. and meta platform that's kind of a random one but cool dividend growth history again with this random peak in growth this time it's in 2021 and it drops really hard in 2022 so automatically i don't know if i can trust a position like this because i'm gonna want consistent dividend payouts even if it decreases a little bit not this dramatic so i guess i would need to look into why it dropped so much between 2021 and 2022 if you know why leave comments down below or if you have an idea why but otherwise yeah i don't know the next one's TSLY, it's the Yield Max Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF. This is one of a few Yield Max based uh, ETFs that I have been recommended to check out by you guys. I guess it's an ETF that monitors the position that's within the tiles, in this case, Tesla, which nowadays may not be the greatest, but we'll just keep going. So in the past year, it's dropped over 48%. And that's all we got. So this is brand new. Expense ratio of 1%. That's that's crazy. That's high. This is crazy. 92% dividend yield. That's okay. And then it pays $14.40 per share per year off a $15 share. So every single year, you would be getting one full share of TSLY. And this has some long-term history. I'd probably go and invest into it just for that easy money, because that's super easy money. Holdings break down, 98% government, and then the rest in cash. And then a lot of treasury notes and builds. Tesla, I'm not sure what that is, but obviously Tesla based, so we'll just keep going. It's not gonna have much history just because it's a brand new position, but yeah, I, I don't know about this one. This is, this is one of those things where I feel like you would invest into for the first couple of months just to take advantage of those uh, dividend payouts. But yeah, that's a high, high dividend yield. That's, that's crazy. Speaking of dividend yield, I was recommended this one specifically for that. It's VIG, which is Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Index Fund ETF shares. In the past year, it's grown almost 15%. It's grown over 60% in the past five years and grown over 130% in the past 10 years. I like that so far, but we'll keep going. 1.8% dividend yield. That's not, that's not really that high, but granted, we just looked at one of almost 100%, so 
it's not that bad. Expense ratio is 0 0.06, that's great. And with the dividend yield pays over $3 per year per share with $177 share, that's, that's low, but this growth is, that can make it all worth it. So this position invests in dividend paying stocks for companies and tracks the performance of the S&P US Dividend Growers Index. I guess it tracks companies within the S&P 500 that have a long history of growing its dividend payout, so. That's pretty good. Its top holdings are technology, financial, healthcare, industrial, and consumer defensive. So that's pretty good. And its top holdings, Microsoft again at top, Apple, Broadcom, JP Morgan Chase, and United Health Group. There's some other companies I like, like Visa and Johnson Johnson Home Depot. So this is not too bad so far. I do see that it has a 10-year growth history of paying its growing its dividend payout. So that's really cool. And yeah, that's just kind of more of an image of that so this one okay this is more of a safer position that will give you some nice growth and some consistent dividend payout so this is probably for me another one of those add to watch list positions all right next we have dgro's the iShares core dividend growth etf pretty much I can guess what it does, but we'll just keep going. The past year, it's grown over 12.5%. Past five years, over 53%. And this is a new position. It, it was accepted the beginning of June 2014. So it's almost 10 years old, but not quite yet. It looks pretty good as far as growth. Has a 0.08% expense ratio, which is great. Has a 2.3% yield, paying $1.33 per share per year. That's not bad at all, especially with the share price being under 60 bucks. So it looks like this position invests in dividend paying stock within the Morningstar U.S. Dividend Growth Index. I'm not sure what the Morningstar U.S. Dividend Growth Index is, but okay, that's not bad. As far as its holdings, it has a 19% financial, 17% tech, and healthcare, industrials, consumer defensive, and then some other ones. It's pretty spread out, so diversified for sure. And its top holdings are Exxon, Microsoft, Chevron, JP Morgan, and Apple. Not bad, especially with some of the other companies that you can see. It does have nine years of growth, of dividend growth, which is great. I definitely like that. Pretty similar to how I feel about the last position that we just looked at VIG. So yeah, this might be one I, I keep, in, keep in mind as well. AMDY, it's the Yield Max AMD Option Income Strategy ETF. This one's brand new. So it got incepted September of last year. It has a 0.99% expense ratio. That's like the second highest one, so that's crazy. And a 38% dividend yield. High expense ratio, high dividend yield. It would, it would, I guess, be worth it if it was consistent, but we don't know yet. It's holdings, it's government, over 116%. I actually don't get how that works, so please, if you know, leave a comment below and explain that. And invest in treasury bills, so okay, fine. This one, it seems a little bit of a, a risk, so I probably would have to hold off on this one. And we have another Yield Max ETF. It's MSFO. It's the Microsoft Options Income Strategy ETF, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, this one's also pretty new. Again, it has a really high expense ratio and a really high dividend yield, which in a in a you know ideal world, this would be amazing. Four dollar and twelve cent dividend rate per share price per year. Great. All right, so this one says it invests in growth and value stocks of companies across div diversified market caps and invests in short-term U.S. Treasury securities. So I'm guessing the majority of its holdings is gonna be, yep, in government, 95%, and it's gonna be mostly Treasury bills, including some Microsoft. I'm really not sure what these are. Um, I'm not gonna diverge and try to figure that out just for the sake of this video, but it's not gonna have much of a growth history because this is a fairly new ETF. Guys, let me know in the comments below, what, what is your take on yield max etf it might be something i'm gonna look more into on why there's such a hype there even though maybe for long-term investors it might not be as attractive and finally we have cony it's another yield max it's the coin option income strategy etf so i'm guessing it is based off bitcoin or coinbase but let's see not a year old yet one percent expense ratio over a 51%, almost 51% dividend yield, so it pays almost $13 per share per year, which is almost half of its share price, which would be a miracle if it can continue that. Yeah, it seeks exposure to the share price of the common stock of Coinbase. So I guess that's what each of these other yield max positions are doing, like Microsoft and Tesla. Holdings, government, holdings, top holdings are treasury bills and Coinbase. So again, 
guys, please let me know. But that actually will do it. These are all 17 positions that you guys have recommended me to check out or to invest into. This is a different type of video. I just kind of want to freestyle this. But let me know in the comments below if you guys actually like this video or if you thought this was super boring or ridiculous or whatever. Um, but thank you guys for watching as always. And until next time, 